It's all about having the key insights, following the leaders of the crypto industry and background stories on blockchain technology trends to keep you one step ahead. Monty Metzger, CEO of LCX.com, keeps you up to speed with what's moving global crypto markets and gives you the latest insights about LCX's platform and ecosystem. This is LCX Insights Live. Excellent. Welcome. This is a very special LCX Insights Live. I'm thrilled to see you all again. We are live on YouTube, live on Twitter, uh, and uh, everybody can tune in and send us their questions, especially on YouTube. I will see them right away and answer them. So welcome to LCX Insights Live. In this live video show, I'm engaging with the world's top blockchain projects, entrepreneurs, investors, and pioneers in crypto and blockchain in honest conversations meant to challenge traditional ways of thinking. My name is Monty Metzger and I'm founder and CEO of LCX. LCX is a regulated fintech company that focuses on digital asset trading, compliant token offerings, which we're talking about today, and tokenization such as the Timons.com project. LCX received eight blockchain related approvals by the Liechtenstein regulator. That's more than any other company in the country. Liechtenstein is this small country next to Switzerland and Austria in the middle of Europe and has a very high reputation with a AAA rating from Standard & Poor's. That's the highest rating a country can get. And Liechtenstein has introduced these new blockchain laws and a legal uh, framework, which is forward thinking around cryptocurrencies and blockchain, providing legal clarity and security for our LCX users, for the tangent token sale and for uh, the platform as a whole. So today's show title is Tangent, All You Need to Know. And I have an um, awesome um, team here with me. So let me introduce Clint Alexander and Ben Jordan here, get you on the show. How are you? Great, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Monty. Yeah, thank you for hosting, Monty. Cheers. Excellent. We're looking forward to this. So I see there are more and more people coming in in the live show at the moment. And we want to get started with a couple of questions. Today is all you need to know about Tangent. So um, let's get dive right in. I think what is Tangent? Can you explain? Yeah, definitely. Maybe I'll take that one. So my name is Clint Alexander and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Tangent. And Tangent basically is a permissionless DeFi protocol uh, built on the Cardano blockchain. Uh, we're a team of talented uh, web free and blockchain developers who have gotten together and we want to provide DeFi as a service tools to projects, tokens, um, artists and end users on the Cardano blockchain. So some of our flagship products include um, we have an NFT farm, a redeemable NFT launchpad and also a yield farm creating creator tool. So we have our own tools that people can use, and we also do a uh, white labeling for people as well, so we can build tools for, for other projects. Okay, okay, that's great. Um, I think in, in general, um, you already dived into a couple of your products, which is good, so we'll um, certainly have more time to dive into that. Um, probably be before we go into Tank Token and these kind of things, can you tell us about why Cardano, why did you choose to build on Cardano blockchain? Should I take yeah, that definitely. initially? Uh, uh, yeah, maybe Ben, you can take that one. Just briefly, yeah. So why Cardano? Uh, good question. Uh, the essential things, the security, the scalability. Um, you know, there's a lot, lot to be said for what Charles is doing as well. Uh, it might not be the, the, the fastest process, but it's the most professional. Um, mm -hmm. And we, we know Cardano as a, as a go-to name, and, and this is why we, we picked it. Also, it's a, it's a niche. We feel we're creating something that... Um, not another organization that hasn't done before in regards to the NFT farming, especially. So. Okay. Yeah. I, I see, there, see there's a lot of traction at the moment around Cardano. I mean, also LCX had been implementing um, the, the hard fork now already. We're ready to go to the next level for Cardano. We think that the smart contracts, which are enabled on the platform are outstanding. And um, we are proud and excited to welcome you as um, the next token sale at LCX, token sale manager. Can you tell us more about the Tang token? What is the token about? What's the utility? 
um, and functionalities. Yeah, thank you, Monty. So basically, Tang is a governance token for the uh, Tangent uh, protocol. And what we did was we want uh, Tangent to be a community-owned project. So we've created two things to in, in, in enable this. We've created the Tangent DAO, which is a decentralized autonomous organization that exists on the blockchain. And we've also created the Tang token as a governance token to control this DAO. So the Tang token gives the holders the right to vote on proposals and suggest changes to the protocol in itself. So it's um, it's very um, important token for our ecosystem because mm -hmm. actually holders of the Tang token have a say in how we govern the whole protocol and they can even change, for example, the, the utility of the, the Tang token. So right now, the utility of the token is as a governance token. But in the future, if um, members of the Tangent community got together, they could change how the Tang token was used or how the Tangent platform operates in itself. How will this be done? So this will be done on chain and it will be permissionless. So what would happen is you'd have to have at least one Tang token in your wallet in your web free wallet, such as Eternal on Cardano. Um, that's basically the Cardano version of MetaMask. You'd have to have at least one Tang token in your wallet and having that one token would give you the right to vote. So you could basically submit proposals and then when the proposal is submitted, we would um, have a voting schedule. And on before the voting schedule begun, there will be a snapshot. The snapshot would uh, basically say how many Tang tokens are in your wallet that's how much weight you have in the vote. And then as long as the, the vote meets the quorum and it is positive in the favor, then that proposal would be enforced later on um, by, via a smart contract and via modifications to those contracts if necessary. Mm -hmm. And now um, going back to the product itself, um, can you give us an update on where you stand today? What has been done in the past and like, What's, what's on the roadmap in terms of the uh, ecosystem and your, and your products? Yeah, definitely. Um, we've been working really hard on this project for over two years now. And where we stand right now is that we have a test version of our app is being internally tested at the moment. We're currently running a lot of uh, different edge case tests um, to see what happens. And then probably by next week, we'll have the first uh, public test net up and working and people can use the start using the app themselves. And the first thing we've been working on is the Tangent DeFi uh, app, which is basically the NFT farm and also the yield farm uh, generator. With this app, uh, users can create their own NFT farms and they can create their own yield farming um, pools as well for their tokens. Uh, and it's pretty cool. So basically this is really interesting because in the past um, yield farming was kind of something that could only be done by very specialized teams, such as the, the owners of a decentralized exchange. And now with our tool, we're putting that power into the hands of the end user. So other projects can come use it. Uh, you know, any, anyone can come use it. It's completely permissionless, which is really nice. And uh, yeah, we're really busy with that right now. Let, let's break that down. So how would you describe uh, the NFT farm? What is the tangent NFT farm? Yeah, sure. NFT. Uh, ben, maybe you take that. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, I can I can jump in there uh, <laughs> briefly. So, um, the idea of the of the NFT farm is to generate rewards for the users who purchase NFTs. Um, a lot of people, you know, just see them as, as as a JPEG still, but we want to give more utility, and this is what the kind of underpins everything that Tangent does. Um, so, in regards to NFT farm, we, as Clint mentioned, we're going to have two phases. Um, the first will just be for, for whitelisted NFTs, um, which are made by our, our in-house artist called Quirks, Japanese bohemian artist. Um, this will be a 12 plus one Genesis edition, um, and users will be able to single-sidedly stake these NFTs um, on our very aesthetically pleasing NFT farming um, platform. Um, and our second version or second stage, which we're really excited about, is our, as Clint mentioned, our permissionless um, um, farm where users and, and, and creators, artists will be able to come um, and create their own NFT farming pools on uh, on our platform. Actually, yeah, if you, you we have a, our MVPs up there, Monty. If it, if you click launch pad, it uh, sorry launch app, it might uh, it might pop up. <laughs> okay, and excellent. Yeah, yeah. So as Ben was saying, um, basically the NFT farm, it came out of this idea that we wanted to create more ut utility for NFTs. 
-hmm. And that's exactly what we're doing here. You know, um, artists can come and they can create an NFT farming pool themselves. And maybe they might want to do that because they want to share royalties with uh, NFT holders. Or maybe it's because they've created their own token that they want to, you know, uh, fairly and transparently distribute to their token holders as well. Mm -hmm. So we really are creating a, 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 a tool here and a service here that basically allows artists and other projects to create, um, to add on utility to these NFTs, financial utility. Okay, so be besides the financial utility, you also had been speaking about DeFi services. And um, while we had been preparing this, you mentioned DeFi as a service, DAAS as a key yes. part of it. So why do you consider Tangent as a DeFi as a service platform and, and what are you offering? Yeah, basically it's because other projects, um, other coins, other tokens can come to our platform and they can use our tools and services to add value to their own ecosystem. So what we're doing is we're basically creating, um, we're creating end solutions that are um, completely code free. Anyone can come and use it. They don't need to be an expert at coding. They can have zero coding knowledge. And they can come to our, um, our our app and they can basically use these tools themselves as a graphical user interface. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really special about it. And also, so if they create use our app to create the, the farming pools, et cetera, or to launch their tokens, then they're doing it through our app. But what we also offer is whitelisting uh, solutions to other projects too. So say, for example, they wanted their own DeFi farm or they wanted their own launch pad, then we would... Uh, create that for them, turnkey solution with their own hosting and their own graphics and everything, or even create all the graphics for them ourselves. So we have the team to do that. We're, we're 10 man, 10, 10 people, actually, 10 yeah. people strong. So and, the company uh, is at, at 10 people at the moment. When did you start? You said two years ago. Um, two years ideas, ago, yeah. Yeah. Ideas were batting around two, two, two years ago, and then we really kind of got into it um, about a year, a year and a half ago. Um, and that's when Tangent as such was born. Um, so yeah, we, as, as Clint mentioned, we've got a 10, 10 strong team of, of coders, um, legal representation, um, artistic um, directors, et cetera. And, uh, and yeah, we span the globe as well. Um, we're both based in Dubai at the moment. The company's registered in, in the beautiful BVI, British Virgin Islands, but we've got team members in, in the USA, um, over in India, um, obviously in Dubai and the UK. Um, so we, we're spanning the globe. So, so how does the team consist of like, um, is there like more developers or do you have like you as a, as the co-founders, how do you split the roles across the 10 people at the moment? Sure. Right. Sure. So we'll... Go Go you jump in, mate. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have a uh, basically right now, seven of our 10 are coders. So we have, um, four full stack developers and then we have a front end uh, specialist and a back end specialist. And finally, we have a UI UX uh, specialist too, who's doing the graphics for us. So 70% of our team is coders. And then the other three are basically myself and Ben, who are also uh, amateur coders. We've been teaching ourselves. And then we also have a, a legal compliance uh, expert as well, who's on the team. Mm -hmm. And how would you describe the vision of Tangent in, in the future? Um, let's say like five years from now, how big? What will be the offering and, and what do you want to achieve? Sure. Ben, sure. for you, you take yeah, I'll jump with, with, uh, with the starter there. I mean, you know, we, we've kind of um, touched on this already. We really want to go permissionless. We want to be this platform that allows for all these different organizations to come and, and create what, what we're creating in our in our stage one. Um, and everything, I don't, know if, I don't even know if our community kind of are aware of it so much, but everything we do at Tangent is kind of underpinned by the arts. Um, be it, mm. you know, our logo design, our branding, um, our NFTs, which we're, we're, we're releasing very soon as well. Um, so something else that we're, we're very passionate about in years to come is providing this platform for, for artists, digital artists, to showcase their work. Um, and with the, the creation of the Tangent DAO, what we hope to be able to do, um, digital artists will come to us and they'll showcase some of their, their works. And our community will take a vote and say, right, we want to fund this artist. Um, and funding could be anything from um, graphics cards to uh, new laptops. In fact, even before uh, Quirts, our, our artist was was working with us full time, and we were able to help him him create his, his masterpiece. So, yeah, we just to summarize, we want to create the uh, 
the, the permissionless area where, where users, um, uh, developers, and also artists can, can come and grow and showcase their talents. Mm -hmm. And this, it, like, how do you anticipate the growth of it? Um, where do you see, like, um, now rolling out? Uh, what will be kind of the growth drivers um, of it? And uh, how, how big is the overall market you are targeting? Uh, yeah. yeah, okay, that, sure. Uh, basically, you know, for us, like I said, we're a protocol. So a protocol is not an application. It's actually like a set of rules and guidelines for how uh, smart contracts interact with each other on the Cardano blockchain, mm -hmm. specifically decentralized smart contracts and to do with uh, decentralized finance. Yeah. So for us, we really think the growth here will be with Web3. We think Web3 is the future of uh, the internet. So what is Web3? So Web, we basically had Web1, 1, 1 1.0, and that was just kind of like a read-only web where you could read information on the internet. And then the, the last phase we had was Web2.0, which is a read and write phase where you can add your own content, et cetera. And this is where we had all the social media explosion and the, uh, the, uh, the idea of content generators and influencers, et cetera. And now with Web 3.0, it's going to be read, write, and own. So you will actually own your own content. Mm -hmm. And the key points that are, are basically underpinning this growth from Web 2 to Web 3 is the idea that we have a decentralized web and we have um, self-ownership and self-custody of, of our content. And this is what fits in very, very nicely with uh, cryptocurrency. So we feel that basically... Web3 is decentralized. It will be using cryptocurrency as the underpinning for the foundation of it, the infrastructure yeah. for it, the smart contracts, and the self-custody and the privacy. And for us, we think that, that the growth is going to come from implementing these Web3 solutions. Also, another driver in growth really is um, with the NFTs. The, the recent boom in NFTs was based on speculation. It was just based on the speculation of the value of art. It's very speculative in nature. And now we're really seeing the true value of NFTs is going to come out. You know, that's kind of collapsed on itself. In fact, if you look at the trading for OpenSea, it's down about 90 plus percent in terms of volume. So it's literally dropped from, you know, 400 million US a month down to a few, a few million US at the moment. So it's really is a collapse in that market. But what we see rising from the ashes of this collapse is the true utility of NFTs coming out. And this is what people need to understand that, uh, non-fungible tokens are their own protocol on the blockchain. They're a technology, and it's actually separate to digital art. And what we're doing now with our NFT launchpad, which is a, kind of like a real fire application of NFTs, the tokenization of real-world products, and also with the NFT farm, which is um, using the NFT standard to represent uh, smart contracts in finance. This is where the, 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 the real growth is going to come now, and it will be sustainable yeah. growth. Sustainable growth. Yeah, and I feel like um, everybody's talking about what's the next uh, like killer app we need. We now have the infrastructure, the layer one uh, Cardano blockchain, I think is a powerful infrastructure as a whole. But everybody's looking like what's the killer app. And I think Tangent has all the uh, necessary elements to become a killer app on, on Cardano. Um, uh, and you have a, a proper team in place, you're building um, exciting products. And then also how you now decided to launch the 10 to token, I think um, Andam um, uh, kind of explains uh, your way of thinking. Um, so this brings me to a question, how or why did you choose LCX as a partner? Good question. Absolutely. Um, so first of all, the, the legal perspective, um, we want to do things by the book. Um, so LCX being a regulated exchange was was obviously a, a key point for us. Um, being based in Europe as well, um, we're European. Um, it's a big part of our, of our target market. Um, also, of course, NM, NMKR's a very successful sale. Um, we're implementing a lot of their tool set within our, within our platform. Um, so for the success of that, we part, partook in that as well. Um, and also, you know, without blow your own trumpet, Monty, yourself, you know, you've been in the industry for, for quite a while. So um, when we had the initial talks with yourself and your team, we were reassured that um, this was the right choice for Tangent. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I wanted to work with you, Monty. So, you know, uh, yes. yeah, I've been following you for a while on Twitter and uh, yeah. We're really excited to be working with your team and you know they're top yeah. notch like the most probably the highest um 
the best standard in terms of regulation on the on on the, the blockchain space at the moment and uh yeah very excited Yes. Yeah, I can also give the community a little background on this. I mean, we get um, hundreds of applications of different projects who want to be listing their token and also doing token sales with us at the moment, but we have to decline most of it. It's um, sometimes the quality of the product is not there, the team is not good enough, and, and we are feel responsible that everything we present is really top-notch uh, to our community. And then also we want to create a long-term success of it so that's why we um, participate on, on many levels i'm advising you now uh, for the next couple of years so really putting my own reputation at stake i want to help you to succeed on, on all levels um, and the first start is actually to get the tank token out there uh, and there's a process also we explain on why we do this um, but uh, i think you mentioned that um, getting it done the legal way is more important than ever. You want yeah. to issue it that it's safe for the token buyers and the users um, who are using the utility token in the future that they don't have to worry. And I think there we have uh, the legal basis to do this, uh, especially out of Liechtenstein, we can target uh, global markets from day one. Um, how to participate in the token sale? That's a good question. We were actually going to throw that back to you, Monty. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, first of all, you need, you need to get registered, of course. So make sure you, you visit accounts.lcx.com, get yourself uh, KYC. Um, and then, yeah, our token sale will be kicking off on the 1st of October, so just in a couple of days. Um, and, yeah, within your within your dashboard, um, you can navigate to it that way and, and um, participate. Yeah, so yeah, I'd say make, make sure you get registered uh, ASAP. Uh, pass the KYC checks. They don't take very long. Usually it's a turnaround is less than one day. Once you've done that, there's a number of ways you can fund your wallet on LCX. Um, at the moment, um, you can fund it via euros or you can fund it via cryptocurrency. There's uh, lots and lots of cryptocurrencies are accepted there. And for the actual token sale, we're, we're accepting uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, ADA, US, USDC, and, and Euro, Euro Fiat. Yeah. So, so. So uh, let me let me summarize the steps here. Um, so first of all, um, so how to participate to the tank token sale? First of all, go to lcx.com, get your pound uh, verified. That's that's number one. Number two is deposit some funds. Um, you mentioned the the currencies we are we accepting, so you can put some ADA stake and say, okay, we want to I want to put that in. So deposit some funds, and then third is. Um, you, it's a first come first serve opportunity on October 1st, we'll launch the token sale and then you have to click purchase. You'll find it at uh, lcx.com slash token sale or the button there, token sale. And then you find all the details about the team, the roadmap, also legal information. We have a full disclosure around basic information, which is required by law. So, um, like risks, opportunities, everything is uh, set out there. Um, and, um, yeah, and then you just click buy, and uh, then you're a, a proud owner of some tank tokens. Yes, exactly. So, and um, then also to explain, so once you bought the tank tokens, um, they are um, still locked in your account, occupied. You can't withdraw them right away. There's a, a depending on um, the round you're taking part of their Westing schedules, but then there will be a guaranteed listing. So we list it at L6 Exchange. And one key element um, which we now noticed is um, as we support the Cardano community in a very strong way, um, the outreach is going far beyond the core of Cardano. Uh, because if you're participating in a Cardano native token sale, uh, maybe one step back, the Tang token is a Cardano native token. Uh, which means um, that you need a Cardano wallet um, to host it. You uh, need to be familiar with the system. And um, now what we've noticed is that a lot of token buyers are also um, are not familiar with Cardano. They don't have a wallet yet, but they still are excited about it. So they participate in the sale and then they actually see, okay, how can I get started? But at LCX, it doesn't matter. You don't need to have a Cardano wallet as it's the, the centralized uh, platform, centralized exchange, and it also enables um, the trading at L6 Exchange as a centralized platform. 
Uh, nevertheless, then I, I assume you will be also launching uh, or there will be uh, just like DeFi, uh, de decentralized exchanges. Um, uh, what's your kind of roadmap in terms of um, getting adoption of the tank token, uh, additional listings? Uh, what's on the roadmap over there? Yeah, thank you. That's a really good question. So with the roadmap, we've got so many exciting things coming right now. And we have the launch of our NFT launchpad, and we have the first tokenized uh, tangible product offering on there as well. So we signed a partnership with an a international brewery called, a company who make uh, out, non alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks called Guaylo Beer. And we're doing a limited edition collectible uh, non-alcoholic drink that is going to be tokenized as an NFT and sold on the launch pad. And it uh, really is a limited edition special piece. The, the art is all made by uh, Quirtz, who's a famous bohemian artist from Japan. And the token itself can be tradable on all the existing um, NFT marketplaces on Cardano as a secondary trading market. And finally, when you want to redeem it and you want to get the physical uh, beer sent to your house, then you can do that as well through our redemption zone on, on the launch pad. So that's one of the really exciting things that's coming, and that will be coming um, in December, perhaps sooner. Um, another thing that's very exciting that's coming is the launch of our Genesis NFT art collection, which are stakeable within the NFT farm we're creating. And they're basically a debit note where you can stake these NFTs over a two-year period, and you can get a passive income from them, a yield. And we've done the calculations with it as well. And basically, um, it's a random mint. So you don't know what NFT you're going to get. There's 36 different um, NFTs. And each one has its own staking power. Mm -hmm. And so even if you get the lowest staking power, you're still going to make back all your money that you spent on the NFT within two years, which is pretty, uh, pretty uh, spectacular. And um, yeah, if you get the, the rarest one, then the rewards will be really high, actually. Um, for example, in that, that staking pool, the rewards are about 40,000 US. If you're the only one staking for the whole two years, you'd get the full 40,000 US. But um, the actual maximum uh, amount of that one are only five pieces. So even if all five people were staking, then you'd probably get uh, uh, approximately 8,000 US dollars over the two year period. So we're creating these really cool tools and we're incentivizing it with a lot of reward. And we're also opening it up opening them up and making them permissionless and then inviting other token projects on Cardano to come use them and create their own um, NFT launches. So that's really how we're driving the adoption at the moment. Um, our plan is just like, you know, how we're surviving the bear market is this, we just keep building and building and building. Yeah. Uh, we and I was part. actually here, the, the question um, here uh, from Nurdin, how will you guys be able to cope and survive with this bear market? What's your strategy here? Yeah, build, build, build. And obviously, we're also communicating more with other projects in Cardano and getting together. You know, other famous projects like NMaker and ADAO, another big DeFi as a service and a DAO as a service uh, platform on Cardano. We're getting together with these type of people and we're forming alliances. We're figuring out what the protocol should be on, on Cardano for smart contracts, what they should be, you know, for NFTs what they should be for, for decentralized finance. Mm -hmm. And you know, by working together, it, it really helps to, in synergy, we can really uh, have a lot of cross collaboration and, and grow the ecosystem together. There, there are more questions around the Tang token. Um, so uh, let me just take two of them here right away. So from Tech Talk Bytes, why is Tang token on Cardano? Can you explain? Yeah. Um, I basically love Charles Hopkinson. I think he's a visionary. I really like what, what he has to say about blockchain. And uh, he's been quite instrumental in a few different things to do with, um, with blockchain over the years. You know, he actually was one of the original founders of Ethereum at one point. Uh, he also was an early adopter of color coins, which was kind of like the first attempt at smart contracts on the blockchain. And uh, he was what attracted me to Cardano. Uh, another thing was uh, sustainability. It's so much more sustainable than, say, Ethereum was before the fork, mm -hmm. uh, before before the merge. Sorry, before the merge, um, and even now, still, you know, with the Vassal hard fork, we have a Plutus smart contracts v3 on the Cardano blockchain, and um, they scale a lot better than than Ethereum. This is the problem with all the Ethereum uh, clones, mm -hmm. you know, layer twos like Polygon and um, Optimism. 
and ZK Snarks, they don't really uh, scale that well. And then with, with Cardano, you know, we haven't had to have other, uh, you know, we, it's all scale, scalable on the main chain, which is great for us. And it's secure mm -hmm. as well. And another, yeah. another really, really important thing is that um, with Ethereum, there's a lot of barriers to entry. If you want to become a validator on Ethereum, you need to get 32 Ethereum, which is quite a lot of money, right? This is about, you know, 40,000 US dollars just to have your own um, Ethereum validator node. And it's also a one-way ticket. You can't take that Ethereum back out at the moment. There's no explanation of when that's going to be reversed and you'll be able to cash out. So there's a lot of um, question marks surrounding how that works. With Cardano, anyone with a bit of ADA can become a validator. You can delegate. It's liquid, uh, dele liquid proof of stake. So you can delegate and you're securing the blockchain. And you can also spend that, that, that ADA at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if yeah. I can just jump in as well, Monty, um, just a couple yeah. other things as well is the community side of things. Um, you know, Clint and I have built before on, on, on alternative chains, and we've just felt this was was missing. Um, so we're part of uh, Catalyst Community, which is kind of like the Cardano <laughs> incubator program. And, you know, we've, we've been able to showcase what we're building there and, and um, fortunately got some support from the community um, in, in, the, in the regards of, uh, of some funding and where the results were just released a few days ago. Um, so, yeah, to summarize the community side of things with Cardano, it's organic and, and they really support projects, we feel, that um, are bringing a niche to, um, to the market. Yes, I, I feel like in, in addition to that, in technology, you know, I've been in the, in the market since the late 90s building um, the, lots of technology companies and been following uh, the, the trends there. There are always uh, first and second generation of, of systems. And I still remember when like the first social media platforms came out, every, everybody was on MySpace and friends there, but then like Facebook uh, took over. So I think we are in a similar situation where like their Ethereum solution, uh, it has scalability issues. And now it's the emergence of a, of a second generation it might be the Cardano kind of taking the lead over here, and and for sure Tangent will be at, on on Cardano, uh, one of the leading projects over there. And I think that that's exciting. You know, uh, there are NFT platforms uh, out there on Ethereum, but they are lacking on, uh, on many elements. And I think you're you're targeting these problems and and trying to solve it. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. Looking into the, these detail, one more question on the on the token itself. Uh, here from Nuruddin saying, "What's the token price?" Yeah, good question. Um, the token price in the public sale is going to be zero point zero zero three eight uh, three two. So zero point zero zero three two US dollars per token. So you know, just for a few hundred uh, US dollars, you can get uh, many thousands of the Tang token, and mm -hmm. uh, we priced it very well, to make it attractive to the market. And uh, yeah, we welcome everyone to get to, get to onboard onto LCX and uh, participate in the sale. Yeah, so and it's open for for everybody to join. So uh, there's a there's a small minimum um, you have to put in, but uh, yeah, it's it's uh, very reasonable, and um, then like ready to to use it or trade with it. Um, and I think the the Cardano community here is is pretty strong. We now saw it with uh, the previous projects we've been doing and especially launching uh, a native Cardano token is really something outstanding. There has not been done many times before, and it's now the right time as Cardano has been um, stepping the leather in terms of the new infrastructure. Um, and in terms of infrastructure, there's one community question here from John T. Potter. How is Tangent's infrastructure? Yeah, in great question. Maybe, Ben, you take it, you take it. No, yeah. sorry, interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. In regards to um, the, the placement of the team, or how should we take this? We'll go. We'll go on that. Say, like, I mean, you're building on Cardano. Yeah. How do you do this? Do you run? You have to run several nodes. How do you build your the tech infrastructure as a whole? Um, I think the, these kind of things. How do you uh, like? Do you outsource stuff, uh, or, or like do you build everything proprietary? Um, these are like key uh, key elements on in terms of your tech infrastructure strategy. Everything is built in house and in, in proprietary of our own our own tech, you know, of our own team. Like I said, we're a ten people strong uh, team, and um, we love to build our own projects. We're also basically working in close collaboration with NMaker and ADAO, 
So we use some of their tech when, when, when possible uh, as a cross collaboration and support for them. Uh, as Ben touched upon before, you know, we're actually a, a Catalyst funded project. So we were part of the Catalyst incubator program on Cardano. So we've re received guidance and support from them. And uh, we actually were successful in a few of the projects that we proposed to them. And we've received funding from them too. So we're receiving uh, monetary support from them as well. And with the infrastructure, yeah, it's very important to be running your own node. We have our own node for Cardano up and running as well as a backup, as well as um, we're also using a, a company called Blockfrost and use their API as well. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, all, all these things are very important. You know, having your own Cardano node, I think is a plus always for a project. And that's, uh, you know, yeah, I hope that answers it. Uh, yeah, next question here from the Great Moonshot. What is the relationship between NMaker and Tangent? Um, sure. So, I mean, I can jump in there. Uh, we've been watching NMKR um, ever since Tangent was really kind of uh, being being uh, being bred, if you like. And uh, we, we love what they're doing. Um, you know, Patrick is, is creating some incredible tools. Um, and yeah, ever since Tangent was really born, we, we've been kind of sharing our um, our progress with the NMKR team. Uh, we've been fortunate to get a lot of feedback um, uh, um, on regards to how things are going. Um, and yeah, lots of, lots of reshares. And we've had a, a few meetings and, and again, showcased uh, what we're doing with, with um, and many of the different team members there. So, um, so yeah, the relationship is we're using their tool set and um, we're, we're listening to their guidance along the way. Okay, yeah. And then uh, there's one more question here. Again, John T. Potter, how to participate in the token sale? I think we laid out the structure a little bit. Can tank tokens be bought with LCX token? Um, I think uh, we uh, you accept uh, ADA, for example, Bitcoin, Ethereum, USDC, and Euro uh, as currencies. LCX token plays a role because there um, you need to pay a, a transaction fee for concluding the public sale, and yeah. for this fee you need some LCX token. So we are. Uh, kind of making it as a utility as well. So everybody who wants to participate needs a little bit of LCX token uh, as well to participate. This, um, that's a great question. I think we should be accepting LCX for the token sale too, Monty. I mean, maybe we should be having that on there as another token uh, that can be accepted, you know, for the full payment. I think that's possible. Let's do it. Okay, yeah, up to you, uh, up to you. So that's a spontaneous idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's spontaneous. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. we missed that. It's Can a be great idea. Really discussed. Um, but this this brings me also to um, kind of a legal clarity on, on the token sale, which I wanted to point out. So this is something dear to my heart because we invested a lot in the in the legal infrastructure. So LCX um, like started out 2017, we incorporated 2018. And we had been eagerly waiting for this blockchain act called the Trusted Technology Service Provider Act. Uh, and we applied for that. It took a year until we got all the approvals, but now we have these eight different roles. And one of the role is called a token issuer. So this is, enables us to issue the token on behalf of Tangent. So that the legal token issuer is LCX, and we are issuing it um, to, the, to the participants at the token sale for the first time which makes us also as a kind of a crucial partner in the, in the system. Um, we have to report this to the Financial Market Authority in Liechtenstein. So we did a, a token sale notification. And with that notification, uh, we have to, for example, say uh, whether the currencies provided, how many tokens are for sale. And then we also, according to the Blockchain Act and the laws over there, we need to publish some um, terms of service and the so-called basic information. And the, the basic information, if you look it up uh, for Tangent, you'll find um, yeah, all the necessary information. It looks like a little prospectus, uh, which you're uh, familiar from the financial um, world. So uh, it's a similar structure, but all around the Tang utility token. So it includes who is responsible. So it's the issuer lcx ag in Liechtenstein. uh it's it's you as a tangent uh, team and the founders are named so we're not hiding there's a company address there's a team you know a lot of clarity uh which is not there for a lot of other sales i see in the market 
Um, and then with that, uh, also like, what does the token do? What are like a certain risks, uh, wallet risk or uh, risk around Cardano blockchain or whatever. Um, so this is all laid out. And I think this, this really makes the Tang token sale very, very unique. Uh, because you want to provide this clarity to all um, token buyers and you want to make sure that there's no um, legal troubles in the future, like what we've seen with XRP or something like that. You know, um, the Tang token is legally classified as a utility token um, according to the, to the blockchain laws. And um, that's like really, really special. So I just wanted to point that out. Exactly. This is exactly why we took that route, you know, with mm. LCX. That LCX were a very um, credible partner, and they have a lot of experience in this department. So yeah. really, for us, there was no other choice. We we definitely wanted to go with you guys, hundred percent. Yeah, puts our mind at ease. Absolutely. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, and for the for the end user, the buyer the, who participates in the sale, they know it's hundred percent legal, fully regulated. And um, for custody, they, you know, LCX have you covered. You don't have to install a wallet. You can even just leave your tokens on LCX. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I think it, in terms of convenience of use, it's, it's very simple to, to participate in the, in the token sale. Um, and um, I, what we also felt is that the community is already very excited and very strong. But can you give us some numbers? Like, how big is the Tangent community? Uh, how are you building it? How is it growing at the moment? Sure, sure. Um, across all our social medias, we're, we're fast approaching 10,000 organic. And I want to emphasize organic um, followers. Um, we've got roughly 5,000 on Twitter. Um, I believe we've got 1,000 on Discord, um, similar on Telegram. Uh, our YouTube, we've got about 270, 300 subscribers. Um, Reddit, and we're on Facebook. And, uh, and yeah, we've got our LinkedIn, which is... Uh, you know, making moves as well. So we're ever growing. Um, as I said, I want to emphasize we're doing this organically. Um, and, and not only that, something we haven't talked about uh, uh, on the numbers wise, and it's hard to, to kind of quantify, but is the Cardano community support that we've got through the Catalyst program, you know, this, this really specific, um, you know, when we meet every Wednesday with the, the Catalyst group and, and a, lot, a lot of projects building on Cardano, this is, you know, a big part of our, uh, our following too. Yeah, exactly. We have partnerships uh, with other projects on Cardano. For example, ADAO. Uh, they just had a vote in their in their in their decentralized autonomous organization. They held a vote whether to accept our proposal for a partnership between Tangent and ADAO, and the votes passed. Um, so we're making that announcement today. And then next week we also have another announcement coming regarding a uh, Rats DAO, which is the biggest NFT DAO on Cardano, and they're actually going to be the first project to be using our DeFi tools. And they'll be creating their NFT staking farm and their yield farm and their rat style staking on our platform. So, um, and for us, we don't charge them anything to do this. We provide the service completely free for them. They can create for free. They can use it for free. But when they actually extract value, when they cash out, we take a, a flat fee, 0.5% on withdrawals. Mm -hmm. And that fee will be going to the treasury that's controlled by the tangent DAO. So okay. this is pretty, pretty important. There's a, another question on the product uh, from Tech Talk Bytes. What does stake artwork means on Tangent? Sure. Well, we've got another term for that as well, which we clone called operative artwork. So it's the ability to um, do things with your NFTs. For example, um, put it on our dashboard and generate yield returns. Um, it could be monetary. It could be uh, further NFTs. Yeah. OK, so it's basically putting the NFTs to work. Um, yeah. in, in some way, um, well, does it uh, does it include um, like fractionalizing uh, NFTs or or ownership? Yeah, some, completely. It does. Um, we actually have a plan to fractionalize some NFTs soon. That's on the roadmap, and we'll be doing a, a gold uh, an F NFT backed by gold, and it'll be fractionalized offering. We're partnering with another very famous uh, gold token. They're currently listed on Coin Market Cap. I can't say their name yet. But um, in the future, that will be another tokenized offering that's coming. And yeah, we plan to do the fractionalized NFT there. And we'll be working closely with uh, ADAO to do that, who are doing some very exciting developing work in fractionalized NFTs on Cardano. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could even do something with uh, Timons in, in, in time to come. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, Timons is now um, tokenizing real world diamonds 101. 
And especially when we talk about physical goods, it's um, there's also a role, a legal role in Liechtenstein called a physical validator, which we applied for, and we're just eagerly waiting uh, until we get the, the confirmation on this uh, role. Uh, and Timens was the showcase for it. So once we get the, uh, the full confirmation about the physical validator registration, uh, then we will go um, full power on this. And uh, I'm happy to do some, some other projects uh, there as well. Um, one more question here from tech side on the community, uh, from the community. John T. Potter is asking, will Tangent move onto different chains? Is it the plan or still staying on Cardano? Uh, I think it's a good idea that we cross chain, you know, if we can support more chains, then we can grow our community and we can also provide more options to our end users. It's not a bad idea. And uh, we definitely have um, some plans for that in the roadmap. Uh, one in particular we're looking at is Hedra. We think Hedra is very interesting. And also Quant as well is another very interesting, uh, very high tech uh, blockchain that's out there at the moment. And they're interval, so they can be their cross chain as well. So it's pretty, pretty interesting. Interoperable. Yeah, yeah, all in good. Absolutely. Yeah, we're keen. I mean, of course, we love the way that Cardano is going as well. And that this is our sole focus at the moment as we emerge. But um, yeah, Quint's absolutely right. We're, we're, not, uh, we're not keeping ourselves blinkered in the future. And, and now, um, looking at the current uh, NFT market and uh, the development of Cardano, um, how do you see that the market overall evolve? Um, what, what are the big opportunities uh, you see? And uh, um, yeah, what should we prefer, prefer for? Like, is it not coming out of this beer market situation or are we in a beer market at all in this time? Uh, what are the, the most interesting trends and, and, and things you see? Uh, I think digital identities is quite an interesting trend that we're seeing emerge now. A lot of people are fed up with always providing their personal information to different organizations. It's also a lot of risk there, where every, every organization is basically doing self-custody for this data, where they're holding your passport, they're holding your, you know, your user information on their personal private server, and then these servers aren't always secured properly. They get hacked, your information gets leaked and it's on the dark, dark net, right? So with a, with a digital identity, if we had a digital identity standard across the web, then you'd only have to do this once, and you you would have set, you'd have the, your own custody for this information, and mm -hmm. you basically just verify yourself once through the DID program, and then after that, you know you could just show this to the um, to the LCX, say for example, and then they can boom your KYC is done without actually exposing all your information. So I think this is a very um, low hanging fruit at the moment. At some point, this is going to get picked, and it's going to they're going to be there's going to be an industry standard that emerges. And I think um, all the different blockchains will incorporate that as well, because it will just be so simple to do. Yeah. Um, then I'm looking at the, at the times we now have like 10 minutes left, and I just want to cover like the most important topics uh, around Tangent and also the token sale. So one key question um, which the community needs to know is about the token economics. Can you explain the outline of the token economics? Um, how is it structured? What are you going to do with the funds? I'm pulling that up from the website. Thank you. <laughs> this was good. It was good to have it in front. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, I mean, it's that gone, Clint. You carry on. No, you go. You go, my friend. It's for you. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're, we're quite open with with our with our tokenomics or our economics, as we like to call them. Um, our foundation tokens, if, I think it's mentioned, well, it is mentioned in our white paper. They're locked for a very substantial amount of time and then a very slow release um, to give that kind of uh, backing to the community that we're not here for for that. Um, you know, we've got, a, we've got a sizable amount for our rewards program, which is linked to our, our farming side, our NFT farming platform. Um, so, you know, just to touch on that, um, something closer to home um, is that this this token, sorry, the NFT sale that we're doing, the Genesis launch, um, users will be able to, to to get substantial rewards. For example, there will be airdrops on specific days of these 12 uh, Genesis uh, edition NFTs. Um, looking around the rest of the tokenomics, um, big part that I mentioned as well is our artistic grants program. So um, we've, we've set aside 10% of our tokenomics for that purpose, to fund these artists to give them the platform and to allow them to create what uh, what 
the, you know, the masterpieces that, that they wish. Um, and of course, yeah, we've got the funding round split up between the, the different LCX sales. Have I missed anything there, Clint? Sorry. Uh, we have our community rewards section. So that's 25% of the total uh, token allocation. And those rewards will be yeah, given out to the community for using our apps, uh, periodically yeah, given to them um, as airdrops. Also, we have uh, rewards can be earned by staking the Tang token as well. And, and these rewards won't be given out in, say, 12 months. It'll be over 10 years, actually. And for ourselves, yeah, we have our, for the team, we have the, our token allocation is um, in 10% of the total uh, supply. And that's um, in the Tangent Foundation. And it's locked for two years because we we really are thinking long term here. And after the after the two years, it's uh, it's still on a vesting schedule, so it's slowly released. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of things we've got there as well. Uh, one more thing, obviously, is the uh, the artistic grants and ambassador program. We have ten percent there for uh, members of the community to come and they can earn those rewards. Ben, would you like to talk a little bit about the ambassador program? Sure, absolutely. So we've got some applications coming in thick and fast uh, as of last week when we really kind of made it open to the public. Um, so yeah, via our website, people can can apply to become an ambas uh, ambassador. Um, we're interviewing a, a gentleman and his wife tomorrow, um, a, a, a developer based in America or sorry, a crypto enthusiast based in America and his wife who's an NFT artist. And, and what we really want to do is just to help, again, build the community, have people who, um, you know, love what Tangent's doing and love the, the cross collaborations we're having within Cardano and just to, you know, sing our praises, if you like, and, and get our name out there. Uh, but not only that, be a kind of voice or a middle middle man or middle woman between um, the, the, the core team and the community. Um, so they will attend um, certain meetings on a, week, uh, on a weekly basis with the team and, and share this uh, information directly to the community. So it doesn't just seem from directly from the top down. We want to have uh, have something in the middle, too. Okay, and um, I think another key aspect, just to uh, lay this out in detail uh, as well, is, um, oh, let me switch that. So about the Tang token sale, we talked about the public um, sale, but I wanna um, pull out the details around the public sale A and B, and maybe we, uh, maybe Clint, you can uh, guide us through the, the process over here. Um, what are the options? Um, let's pull it up. There you go. So, yes. So basically, there are two token sales that will be uh, for the public on LCX. The first one is called Public A, and that has the fixed sale price of uh, 0 0.00318 US dollars per token. Uh, with this one, it's a lower price, and the minimum purchase is 500 US dollars. And basically, it has a lockup period too. These tokens are locked up until the 20th of December. And then after that, it's a slow release uh, every day over two months. So by the end of the two month period around February, you'd have a free float of all the tokens and you can trade them freely. Uh, before that, there is a short lockup period. That lockup period basically will last about three weeks because like uh, Monty was saying before, we are guaranteed a, a token trading uh, place for this token. And that is on LCX immediately after the, the second token sale uh, finishes. So yeah, there's a small lockup period with that. And for that, you get the token uh, at a considerable dis discount. Um, but that lockup period does last for three, three weeks. So those three weeks, you won't be able to trade. After that, you will be able to trade freely uh, on the slow release. Mm -hmm. And then second, the second token sale is a public B. In this token sale, the price is um, a little bit more expensive. The price is 0 0.0198 US dollars per token. And so 0 0.0198 US dollars per token. And the minimum buy-in is 500 US. And for this token sale, there is no lockup at all. There's no lockup on the first day of trading, you can trade this token. Um, and this basically represents exactly 8% of the total token supply. So there's no lockup for this one from, the, from day one, probably on the 5th of December, when the token sale con concludes or around that time, you'll be able to trade freely on LCX. And the important thing about having these two token sales and the different lockup periods is this. Um, at the end of public sale B, the only tokens that will be in circulation are this 8% that are sold in this, this token sale. There'll be no other sellers. There'll be no other tokens available, only this 8%. And that's for the, for the three weeks. After that, there's a slow release of public A tokens. 
So this is a, basically ensures a smooth uh, trading launch of the Tang token. Sounds good. I think that's a good summary of the public sale A and B. So the A starts on October 1st and it's a first come first serve uh, opportunity. Mm -hmm. And what we've seen at the uh, previous Cardano projects is really that uh, within the first uh, 24 hours, they're like almost sold out immediately. Um, there's a huge demand for uh, for this and um, everybody's excited about the, the tangent uh, products already. So um, yeah, we, we feel quite uh, comfortable around it um so with that said i think we um i'd like to get um uh, like one more like two more questions uh from you um so number one would be how was the experience working with lcx so far and like would you recommend to do a token sale for other projects um at lcx as well Sure, maybe I can jump in there. I think I alluded to it earlier. Um, ever since we kind of made this application to, to yourself, Monty, and the team, um, the communication's been efficient. Um, we, we've been asking some probing questions to your team members, and fair play to them. They've given us uh, relevant answers. Um, the onboarding process has been smooth, efficient, um, and yeah, we can only recommend it to other um, companies and organizations who are looking to do a regulated um, legal token offering with, uh, with yourselves. Great. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah Clean. I feel the same way. Uh, we've had a lot of support from the LCX team. Um, so much ad advice as well on our tokenomics and the correct way to, to conduct the token sale, etc. And the price it well, as you can set, like you were saying, you know, with token A, it's actually five times cheaper than token B. So we do expect there to be a huge demand for this. So it's first come first serve. So just make sure you're, you're ready. And that, th that token sale will be beginning uh, in a couple of days on the 1st of October. So yeah, very exciting. Yeah, yeah that, that, that will be exciting. And I think for for me also as an entrepreneur, you know, I started many companies in, in the past and now having a token as an opportunity also for, for future like fundraising and also uh, like covering costs for product development and so is so exciting because this brings your um, future users or your, your clients uh, in a position to be part of your journey. And, and, and when I say this part of your journey, I don't mean that they participate uh, in it like and, and become very rich, but rather becoming part of the community, um, uh, forming the product, giving you feedback. So instead of uh, going to VCs uh, and like race, race for your company, um, they target uh, an exit date uh, at some point of day. So I, I mean, I've, I've run my own VC fund, I know, that uh, you have a life cycle and you think, okay, when can we get out of this again? What's the process? At the community, they really think long-term. And uh, I think that that's exciting how they like participate uh, and, and engage. And that's that's uh, what I feel is so, so exciting about the overall um, LCX um, sale, uh, at the tangent sale at LCX. So um, with that said, I think let's dive into a kind of a closing question from from my side so um if you look at tangent um let's say one year from now uh what will we see can you give us a, a quick outlook future vision of tangent and the, the key deliverables yeah definitely i, I basically kind of see tangent uh, the DeFi app like uniswap because we're permissionless and we're providing services for the projects so I think that um, Tangent DeFi app will be uh, an integral part of the um, Cardano ecosystem and infrastructure where other projects are using uh, the Tangent DeFi farm to create their farming yield farming pools. I also foresee that we'll have you know hundreds of different pools on there and different projects using it. And then we have so many things planned for uh, our roadmap. We also have the launch pad, the NFT redeemable NFT launch pad. I expect by then we'll have dozens and dozens of different products on there and we'll have communities built around these products as well, where they're giving feedback back to the NFT issuers to make new projects, products that are then launched as tokens on the launch pad. And I also foresee that that launch pad, because we're committed to open source principles, where we periodically uh, publish our code uh, open source, I, I, I really do foresee that that will be forked many, many times by other projects mm -hmm. who are basically creating their own launch pads, etc. 
And then finally, another thing we haven't talked about yet is the Tang Globe and our, our, our work into play to earn gaming, where we're creating games where you can own the in-game items and earn money for playing the games. Mm-hmm. This is called play to earn. And this also fits in with NFTs. So we have okay. so many different things uh, actually lined up in the roadmap. Actually, let, let's bring it in because it was also a, a question here from Tech Talk Bytes. Tell us something about Tang Globe Gaming. What is it? I'll just give a little brief explanation first about NFTs and gaming, and then, and then Ben can get into the Tang Globe uh, Gaming. Basically, you know, with, with uh, games now, like you have a lot of people playing online games, etc., but they don't own their assets, right? They don't own the, the in-game items. They Sometimes these game in-game items, you know, you have to play for a long time and level up, etc., to get them. They're very valuable. And then there's no real um, ownership there once you have that item. For example, you know, you can't withdraw it and then sell it yourself, etc. But with um, with NFTs, like I was saying, the non-fungible token standard, we can apply this into gaming and we can literally make it so that every in-game item is represented by an NFT and you have full custody on, of that. And you can own it, you can withdraw it, you can sell it, you can rent it out, lend it to people. Maybe you can perhaps earn money for lending it to people but still own it. Mm-hmm. And another thing that we can have is even have um, people make their own graphics for the for the for the NFT, where you can change the sprite for the NFT, and then that represents a new item in, in what you've created. You know, you customized it. So there's a lot of customization. There's a lot of self ownership that's going on, and it's very exciting. And this is why we 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 have that as um, in the second quarter of 2023. This is something mm-hmm. that will really be coming to 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 fruit to bear the bear fruit in within Tangent. And be yeah. Really so then how how will it look like? Okay, so yeah, by that stage, we expect our community to have grown exponentially, so five, six X from what it is now. And we want to give our Tangent community some some other usability with these NFTs as well. So in our Tang Globe, we will give they will all become Tang Globe trotters and they'll be able to do on game battles. Um, we're, we're very fortunate to have, uh, you know, fight for different NFTs. Um, and then we're very fortunate to have our artistic team. Um, who, who's also capable of, of doing things with this. So um, the very early stages of, of development are coming along with those. Um, so without giving too much away, it, we feel we've got a few niches already with this. Um, but yeah, it's something very exciting. We wanted to almost offer it to our community by that stage, something different. Say, look, you've supported us from an early stage. You've grown with us. Um, here's our on-game battling for different NFTs and rewards along the way. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thanks for the, the summary over there. I think everybody can go to tangent.art um, to read all about um, your company in token sale. Also, they can also visit ltx.com, register there to participate in token sale. I think in, in general, it's an outstanding um, project. I'm really excited to see this all come to light. And I also um, have to say I'm excited to have the Tang a token being registered um, with the token issuance at LCX. Uh, really, you know, we are defining the, the industry to a new level. Uh, in the traditional world, uh, the guys like Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan had been doing IPOs, initial um, uh, public offerings for stocks. And now having this voucher, this utility token, which is has a real use case in a product and launching that um is exciting as well so um look, really looking forward to that mark your calendars october 1st uh, we will start and um thanks for joining here thank you thank you so much monty Everyone. thanks ben and clint yeah bye-bye bye-bye this is lcx insights live for more insights please visit lcx.com forward slash insights and follow us on Twitter at LCX. Onwards and upwards.